Boujou, welcome to uh, the latest episode of the Johnny R Podcast. I'm Johnny R. And happy birthday to me. 42 years old today. And uh, I'm feeling it. I'm getting cramps everywhere. My feet hurt. My back, shoulder. Everything hurts now. So... It's uh, getting to the point where I may need a uh, uh, a personal care attendant. So be on the lookout for that job posting later on. 42 years old, man. Had a, Went and had lunch with the, the beautiful wife. Took me for a steak and wings. She bought me some new moccasins. They're pretty fast. So to show her how fast they were. <clears throat> what else? Went to go renew my license, which the whole system is down. So that pretty much uh, my day was shot after that because I took time off of work. They kept telling me to come back, but the whole system is down. So I don't know. As of midnight, I'm going to be a, an unlicensed driver. So maybe I'll do that in the morning. But whatever. <clears throat> Not much going on here. Same old. Working. Home. Working home. That's all I do. That's what um, I'm supposed to be doing. I suppose. Like a, like a mature adult does nowadays. But it's uh, February 12th, 2018. As I said before, it is my birthday. And... I'd be thinking of last year. Last year is probably one of the saddest birthdays of my life. Because other than uh, eating breakfast with Tatanka Means and Pax Harvey the morning of my birthday, uh, I was pretty much alone because I was in, uh, <clears throat> where was it? Flagstaff, Arizona. I just performed at the 49 Laughs the night before, which was a kick-ass show. One of the... One of the best times I ever had in my life in comedy. And sold out, you know, turning people away at the door. I opened the show and I just had that, uh, had the had the rush when I come off stage, man. And, but then the next day, I was humbled. Because I my flight was for the 13th. So I spent all day alone. In Arizona, with nowhere to go, nobody to hang out with. So, you know, that that's like a, a real humbling experience to be alone on your birthday. Last time I did that, I was a miserable drunk, so I guess it was a step up from that. But other than that, it's my birthday. Happy birthday to uh, other fellow Red Lakers who share my birthday. Lila Bolio and Cher Bolio. Uh, my cousin Ramona up in Alaska. She also, also shares my birthday along with uh, Abraham Lincoln, Josh Brolin, Christina Ricci, Arsenio Hall, also born on February 12th. I always remember those names. Lauren Green, Bill Russell. You know, you, you, you remember the names of uh, people who share your birthday. So... But right now, I'm just waiting on, uh, my wife is cooking me my my usual birthday dinner. Pretty excited about that. And after, I, I made a promise to myself that I will be giving up um, junk food, sweets, sugar, bread, all the bad stuff. I figured since I haven't, <clears throat> you know, I've been able to quit drinking alcohol just six months for me now. Uh, I've been able to quit drinking uh, soda pop, which will be a little over three months now. So I figure, you know, sweets and, uh, you know, candy and McDonald's and junk food should be no problem. So, but after today, so the 13th is when it all starts. But Because my wife is cooking a big-ass dinner for me now. And so... That starts tomorrow. So I figure, you know, 
I'll be able to, I suppose I'd have to exercise too if I wanted to lose weight, but ugh, I don't want to exercise. I suppose I could train like Rocky did in Rocky IV because I got a lot of hills here. Snow. I live down deep in the woods. So maybe I'll do a, a Rocky thing. Start lifting, uh, lifting chunks of wood, you know. Doing the, the swivel thing with a big log and grow a beard. If, well, actually, I can't grow a beard, so. But I'm in training. <clears throat> but uh, I got a big announcement um, to share with the crowd on my birthday. Uh, on f March 23rd, I'll be in San Bernardino, California at the San Bernardino Valley College, I think it's called. And I'll be part of the um, the First Nations Experience, First Nations Comedy Experience um, TV series. They've been filming uh, episodes of that since I think January, and they have like uh, they have a thirteen episode season. So I'm not sure what episode I'll be on, but. And I don't know when they start showing either on uh, the FNX channel. So FNX is, I think it's a uh, kind of a PBS type channel. They're under PBS. So you might want to look look for that. So I figure I'll, I'll head out to California on the 23rd, maybe the, no, 21st or 22nd. And also have, uh, I'm also trying to take my, uh, take our, Res comedy documentary. Try and show it to some possible uh, producers or investors to help us get out because that's it was supposed to be done. But you know, as I've been saying, last couple of years won't know it till till I actually see it till it's in my hands. So that's the plan anyway. So I'm trying to make uh, some contacts to people out in. Uh, the Hollywood area. See if anybody wants in on this, this uh, historical, historical documentary about native comedy. So hopefully that happens. But as for everything else, man, it's 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 a struggle trying to get uh, gigs lined up. You know, I'm not pursuing it as hard as I as I should be. So. Because usually gigs just come, come. they've been coming for me, but not lately. I've been on stage twice since August. I went out to Farmington, New Mexico on August 8th, I think it was. And then I think maybe three months after that, I opened for Williams and Re. That was November. And then uh, December, I was in Mille Lacs. No. Hinkley, Hinkley at the Grand Casino, where uh, I went to visit, watched, went to see the homie Tatanka Means, and Tanya Joe Hall was there, you know, we're trying to get all together, but we you know, kept missing each other, but uh, Tatanka asked me to, to bring him out, do about 5-10 minutes, which I did, and uh, that was the last time I was on stage, it was December 20, I want to say December 22nd, so a little bit rusty. But I'm getting uh, ideas down. I got some stuff for some material I'm going to use when I when I make my uh, television debut. Uh, films March 23rd, but I don't know when it'll actually air. So they told me to get 10 clean minutes of my best material, and that's that's what I'm going to do. I figure this would be my uh, my my last stand because. The offers aren't there anymore, so I gotta, I gotta, um, you know, can't pursue it like I wanted to, but if things come up, I'll take them. But as for now, I'll just take whatever comes my way. I'm not, can't be out on the road for, for, for free Paps Blue Ribbon Beer, Paps Blue Ribbon Beer and 40 bucks like I've done before, or, Hundred bucks, two hundred bucks to go three, four hundred miles away, and those days are gone. I'm too old, man. 
got responsibilities. Got a young, young minds to, to mold at my house or whatever. Trying to sound cool. Can't even sound cool. But yeah. But comedy, man, it's a, it's an ugly, it's an ugly game to get into. Humbling. You could be at the, be on top of the world one day and you're going to be back on a, face down in a gutter the next. Figuratively, of course. Figuratively. I've, I, don't, I've, I don't think I've ever been face down in a gutter anywhere before. Because I, I live on the res, so there's no, I've been face down in the dirt, in the mud, in the snow, but never in the gutter. You know, being a, being a young, stupid drunk back in my day. Um, you know, I, I didn't quit drinking, but I don't see myself, you know, I don't make it a point to say, yeah, I'm done drinking, I'm on the red road forever, I've seen, no, that's not me, I'm just, I just, right now, I don't see myself drinking because I'm too busy, uh, I don't have time to be hanging over anymore, so, that's what, that's where I am, I'm just not, uh, making it a, you know, I'm not making plans to go out and get drunk anywhere, like I used to, so, I'm, it's not maturity, it's just, well, I guess, it is a little bit, but, I'm just, uh, I'm just, uh, at a point now where, things are, are, it's getting a little late in the game, you know, we're like, well, that sounds morbid, to put it that way, 42 years old, but, I'm, I'm at midlife right now, so that's what I'm thinking about. What, uh, what, what, what kind of legacy I'm gonna leave? You know, what I'm gonna leave, leave behind for my kids, and I can't be, can't be on the road making a couple hundred bucks. That's not gonna, not gonna cut it when you have a family at home. So strictly a, a grown-up working. Paying my taxes, paying my retirement, health insurance, got my life insurance, which is probably the most important thing for me right now, to have life insurance just in case something happens, God forbid, but, you know, I was thinking today, my wife and I were, were, were cruising around, you know, after our lunch, we had my birthday lunch, she bought me some shoes, and cruising around, I was thinking, thinking about how lazy I am, because I'm not the, the most motivated person when it comes to, uh, you know, cleaning up or, you know, being patient, I, I thought, shit man, if, if me being, you know, me being alive means uh, 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 an inconvenience to me, you know, if I, if I have to be patient and, you know, recover from something really, really serious, you know, I, you know, I just say, pull the plug, man, because I'm, did, uh, did what I wanted to do. Well, not really, but I just how lazy I am, because I don't think I could, you know, work my way back up from some serious health issue, because I just sit there and feel sorry for myself, and, and I don't want to do that, you know. And I also don't, don't want to work hard to fight back, you know. I don't know what that says about me as a person, but I figure, well, maybe it's time to change the way I think, you know. Like, uh, like Tupac said, change the way we think, change the way we eat. I don't know, maybe. Uh, I'm uh, paraphrasing, of course, the great Tupac Shakur. But it just has me thinking about later in life. Because I was thinking, if, if something were to happen where I had to get up and run, I couldn't do it. Because I needed like at least a couple minutes to limber up, you know. Because, you know, just getting off my desk at work, my fucking feet hurt, you know, my back stiffens up. And it just, it's really a long process for me to to physically get up and get going you know I don't know if that's years of inactivity or what but you know I, I was pretty pretty active when I was younger in my late teens early 20s I 
played ball. I uh, well, softball. I lifted weights, and I never ran. I wasn't really a runner. But you know, I lifted weights a little bit. You know, enough to uh, enough to be to be strong a little bit. But I haven't really lifted weights in years. I haven't been physically active in a few years. So maybe that's that's one of the things I'll do once I. Uh, Along with my, my uh, giving up sweets and junk food and all that other stuff, and sugar and bread, all the stuff that's bad for you. But that's where that's where I am. That's what I think. Forty-two years old, you know, in my prime. You know, I older people are probably thinking, "Shit, man, shut the fuck up, man. You're just a kid. You have years ahead of you." So. That's the mindset I got to get into right now because <clears throat> uh, I'm thinking thinking that my prime years are done, you know, physical peak condition, those days are gone. So I could get back into it, so maybe I will do that. I don't know. Who cares? But as for comedy, I'll, I'll go out, you know, if it, if it fits in my schedule, I'll go out. I'll still do some uh, spots. But I'm not pursuing it like I want to. But I'm thinking once this Res Comedy documentary comes out, if it if it if it's as big, if it blows up like I want it to, then I, I'll get into like producing and writing and directing. Uh, you know, my my days as a performer are numbered, so I'll get back behind the camera. You know, help out those that need that would like to get them you know get noticed for their for their talent so that's maybe that's what I'll do keep that um keep that option open if res comedy documentary ever comes out and if it's a success like I want it to be like we want it to be you know we're going on in June it'll be three years we had that initial meeting to get this going and it's a lengthy, frustrating process, you know, especially when it's out of my hands. You know, I, I did my part, and it's just the, the behind-the-camera stuff that that I should have took care of myself. I don't know. That's my, my, that's my main regret right now. You know, so many things I wanted to do with it, but it just didn't happen that way. But what are you going to do? What are you going to do? So, that's where I'm at right now. Working. Coming home, taking care of kids. Uh, giving them the... That's what I've been... It looks like... Uh, if I was on the outside looking in, I would think I spoil my kids, you know. I get them, uh, I try to get them everything they need, you know, what they want, what to keep them, you know, keep them happy, you know. That's what a parent does, you know, want to see their kid happy, but it's probably seeing that my wife and I are spoiling our kids, you know. I just told her that, you know, that's, we're just trying to give them every advantage we had, we didn't have. To succeed, you know, we want them to get out. We want them to see the see things off this reservation. You need to get out, you know, and we'll help you. We'll get you, give you every advantage that we can financially, you know, financially we'll give them every advantage. You know, we, we, we don't have that much money, but what we have, we're pushing it on them to get out see what's out there don't come back here it's it's getting sad here man every day at work I hear sad stories kids being left kids abandoned parents so deep into addiction they don't uh, you know I can't really can't really uh, 
understand their side of it. You know, it's like it's it's the crash. You know, when you get addicted, maybe they don't want to feel that crash of you know coming off the high. You know, the the withdrawals. You know, but I can't really can't really relate to that because I never got that far. You know, I know my hangovers are pretty vicious, but not what nothing like what uh, the these drugs are doing you know nothing close to that though I was on on pain pills a few years back and I didn't know they were you know I didn't know I was crashing at the time when I come off my uh, I think they were what are they oxys I think when I had kidney stones I didn't know what it was and I just toughed it out and I thought I was sick and I thought I was hanging over but State of emergency. The Red Lake Nation is in state of emergency. I don't know what that means, but there have been drug busts around here. And uh, there's a, a, a banishment law that's going to be taken. I don't know if it took effect yet, because I don't think anybody's been banished yet. Though some people should be. But election time's coming up, so maybe... Maybe that'll happen. You know, maybe people are going to be pushing hard for uh, banishment. But what do I know? Just a, just a dumb fat kid from the res. Just thinking hard about where I am, what I'm doing, what what I have, what I've accomplished. What more I want to accomplish. You know. On my way. It took me a while to get to this. To this point in life. But. You just gotta. Keep moving ahead. Keep looking back. You're gonna run into something. It's like driving I suppose. If you keep looking back. You're gonna. You're gonna. You're gonna fall off track. I just made that up right now. I'm like a. Philosopher now. Or is that philosopher? Philosopher, somebody, somebody who sounds smart, which I obviously, obviously aren't. So I still want to get on YouTube, not YouTube, iTunes. So if anybody wants to help me out with that, let me know. Uh, maybe. Oh, I'm going on. Uh, I listen to podcasts. You know, every, just about just about every day. And uh, my favorite podcasts are. Uh, Mark Maron, Joe Rogan, Pete Holmes, Ryan McMahon, and uh, Jim Rule in, uh, has one with Rainy Fields and Tim Ramos. And they had a great interview. Uh, I forgot what his name. Dylan something. I forgot what his name was. I was listening to it on the way from the cities last week. Great, great episode. He's a veteran Hollywood producer. And I think the rest of his is up now, so I'll, I'll listen to the rest of that. But Jim... You know, he, he's a, a big, um, uh, he's a contact for me out there. So I'm trying to see if he has any people that would be interested in watching a res, res comedy documentary when I get out there. So he's helping me with the, helping me out with that. And he also asked if I wanted to be on his guest, be it, I can't even talk. If I wanted to be a guest on his podcast when I go out there, which I, uh, gladly accepted, so. I'll be, I think it'll be my first time on a, a podcast other than my own. So, so yeah. Just talk about live comedy, whatever I'm doing. And I'm going to go spill my guts, you know. Maybe some tears. Okay, maybe not that bad, but. So, I'll be a, my first time on a podcast. I was also trying to get out to uh, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Gabe Nightshield. He has a podcast called Urban Indians Podcast. So I'm going to try and go out there March 3rd because the Red Lake, well, yeah, the Red Lake Nation will be, uh, we'll have a caravan down to Sioux Falls because we all want to go watch Grace White and her Denver Pioneers and their Summit League Conference Tournament first week in March. So hopefully we do that. And speaking about that, that was... They were in Fargo on Friday, Saturday, and there was a big, big, uh, 
big uh, caravan of Red Lakers in Fargo to watch Grace White. And they won. Denver won that game. Uh, Grace White contributed. She's in the rotation, I believe, and she's doing pretty good. Division One basketball player. Good job, Grace White. So hopefully in March I'll be heading down that way to uh, watch the games, maybe get in on a Night Shields podcast. So his uh, co-hosts are uh, Levi Hansen, Gorilla Pimp, and Char Green Maximo. So be on a lookout for that. You should check that podcast out too. They they got good episodes. Native Americans, you know, getting into the podcasting. Yeah. So that was it. That was my. I was thinking. <clears throat> I had a post on uh, Facebook and Twitter about you know comedy and how humbling it is sometimes. And I had a. I got an email. Actually, I got a comment on one of my um on my YouTube page. This lady uh, messaged me. She had a question about some of my videos on on uh, my YouTube page, and then she sent me an email. And she was from Netflix. Uh, she was on Netflix, and uh, I was thinking, "Oh shit, Netflix, man!" It's like. Is this it? Could this be it? You know, Netflix wants some of my footage. You know, they want to, they're interested in um, res comedy documentary. So I was like, fuck yeah, this is it, man. What we've been waiting for. And it wasn't. She just had a question about my footage of uh, other comedians I had. And uh, they also had a, a crew up here in October. And they interviewed all the comedians around here, and uh, but they wanted nothing. That, you know, they didn't want anything for me. They didn't want to interview me. They didn't want to film me at that thing I went to. And I was like, man, all right. That's just another another sign of that. I gotta do this shit on my own. You know, the lone wolf of comedy. It's what I am. It's what I'll always be. I'm like uh, Tony Montana. You know, me, just me, and me and me alone. So it's like uh, like B Rabbit too. You know, when he told his mom he's gonna do his own thing in rap because people out there. I don't know. I lost my train of thought. I was thinking about my my birthday then, but yeah, that was my that was my humbling friend zone. I call it by comedy friend zone so hard, you know. Had me all, <laughs> had me all excited about. Fuck, man, they, this could be it. They they want they want some footage. They want you know want to include me in some of their projects and nope, they don't want me. All right then. All right then. Nothing new to me. Do this shit on my own, you know. Do it all by myself, which I'm doing right now. Everywhere I go. Well, not really. I got a couple bros that are always there for me, so. We'll make something happen. Now I'm thinking, fuck, man. Maybe I'll just fucking pursue comedy full time. Succeed on my own out of spite. But then I remember I have bills to pay, so. Hikes. But yeah, I'm just thinking something will come up. Something will come up. I'll, I've been working hard and a lot of sacrifices doing comedy, so, so maybe this will be it. Something coming close. But I just want to thank you all for listening. I don't know what episode this is, so we'll think of something here. Hopefully I can get a guest for my next one, because right now, uh, I'm at home. And I won't go anywhere until at least March, so. Hopefully, we'll have a guest soon, so thanks for listening.